Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Dan Cardalicchio. I want to welcome you to another segment of Destination Health Podcast, Finding Function in a Dysfunctional World. We have a very special guest on today. I'm very excited about our conversation. It's part of the health and fitness segments that we do. I want to welcome Sarah Willis to our show. Sarah, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this is going to be great. And I know this is your first podcast. So I'm just going to ask a bunch of questions and you answer. You could go on for a half an hour. I could just sit and I'll interject every now and again. So it's all good. So a little bit about Sarah. She's a wife, a mom, personal trainer, IFBB pro, personal training certification through the American Council of Exercise, also certified uh, uh, in fitness, nutrition and sports performance specialist, began competing in 2010 when your daughter was a, what, a, half, a year and a half old. Is that yep. correct? A year yep. and a half old. She has yep. a passion for health and fitness and absolutely love helping people reach their goals. She wants, uh, it's her hope that she makes a difference in the lives of her clients, many whom she considers friends. Sarah, welcome to the show. We're going to have a great conversation. So what was the, what was the defining moment when you did your first show in 2010 and your daughter was a year and a half old? What was that defining moment that said, I'm going on stage? Well, it was really funny because I had always um, had people call me on my arms. You know, I, I was, uh, you know, they thought I had you know, muscular arms when I was younger. And um, I never really, I was almost kind of self-conscious about it for a while. And because I always equated uh, muscularity with masculinity. And right. um, when I got to college, I played um, softball and I ran cross country in college. And I remember going to Walmart to get, you know, some, a few, grocery items or something I was walking through the magazine section and I looked up on the the shelves and I saw I just kind of caught my eye um it was a it was a muscle and fitness hers magazine and Mm -hmm. Monica Brandt was on the front Mm -hmm. and if anybody knows anything about her she's beautiful (laughs) but she has an amazing body and she was a a fitness Olympia winner um, Mm -hmm. in the 90s and I was just I remember looking at her and being like she's pretty and she's like lean and muscular. And I'm like, wow, she, you know, it, it's possible to, to do both. So right. um, I bought the magazine and that's how I found out about the competitions. And then, you know, after I got out of college, I started working and I thought about it, but I never really, you know, thought that's something that I would, you know, you had these things you think, oh, that would be fun to do, but you, I'm probably never going to do that. Right. And, you know, you're sitting there saying, you know what, I'm going to go on stage. I'm going to go into figure. I'm going to go into bikini. And yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Nah. And then lo and yeah. behold, you're on stage, right? Yeah. And so I actually, you know, I, I kind of put that behind. I didn't really have access to the types of gyms I would need to, mm-hmm. to, to train for it. So, you know, long story short, we, my husband, you know, was a college football coach and we moved all over the place. We ended up moving to Michigan. I'd ha- we had already started a family. I had a little girl. And I remember I, that's when I became a trainer. And a lot of the people that I worked with, had competed before and they're like yeah you should try it and I started talking to my husband he's like if you want to do it I'll support you go for it you know so I was like all right let's do this and you know I'd always I knew how to work out but I did not know how to diet I had never had an issue with um with weight before not even when I was pregnant or postpartum I didn't have that problem however this is different though right because because when I'm when I'm with clients that are IFBB pros and MPC pros and they're mm-hmm. in the figure and bikini um, uh, divisions. It is very, in the fitness divisions too, it is yeah. very different, um, yes. the diet and the nutrition that you have in order to get on stage and compete, right? Yeah, absolutely. And my, my first competition, I was just like, oh, you know, like, well, I'm going to make this chocolate cake for my family. I'm going to have angel food cake because it's, you know, fat free. Yeah. But, it's know, not, it's not the way it goes. <laughs> that's not how you do it. Right. 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 I admit, I, so I've, it was a, a learning experience for me. I mean, I got on stage, I did, I did the thing. And then I was like, I really liked this. This was fun, but I need to be able to do it better. And so, you know, it's been a learning process over the years. Like, what foods work best with my body, what, you know, I thought I was very carb sensitive, but I'm actually not, you know, I can eat a lot of carbs and Mm -hmm. um, it's just the types of carbs that I eat. And so, um, you know, I took time off um, between, I I competed in 2010 once, I competed in three shows in 2011. 
And then um, after my the last show in 2011, we wanted to have another child. So I took 2011, 12 off to uh -huh. have another baby. And then I had my son in um, August 2012. You're a busy woman, by the way. You, was, you, you, you and your husband are, are busy parents, yeah. for sure. And, yeah. And then that, so I did. And then I started competing again in 2013. So, right. um, you know, and I've been doing at least one or two a year ever since. And um, it just I, I loved it. I mean, it's kind of like some people do it just to knock you know something off their bucket list. Mm -hmm. But like I wanted something to compete in. I was like, I, as long as God gives me breath in my body, as long as I have an able body, I want to do this. I want to do the best I can. And so I had these goals set out for myself. And that's kind of I've kept going with it. So what do you love the most about it? And what do you hate the most about it? Because you mentioned that you love getting on stage. What's that yeah. one thing? What's that one thing, Sarah, that, that really jazzes you to get on stage? Uh, one thing, I, I really love to watch my body change. I right. love to see my body go from progress picture number one mm -hmm. to stage <laughs> picture and look at what my body is capable. I think that's just, that's amazing. I think it's, it's really, really cool to see what the body is capable of. Um, the thing I hate the most about it, I would say what I hate the most about it besides how much money it costs is because <laughs> it ain't, it ain't, it ain't cheap. Um, I would say probably just the, the impact it has on your schedule. Like it seems like when you're right. in prep, things were you know certain things have to revolve around it. like your family sacrifices time with mm -hmm. you um you know if I go out to eat with my family I usually have to bring my food with me and so it just seems like you know the the food aspect of it the training I mean hour and a half I'm in and out of the gym mm -hmm. okay so that's not that bad it's <laughs> scheduling things around my my meals um you know, kids there's activities there's sports yeah. You got to, yeah. you know, make, make meals, your husband, the whole nine yards is, yeah, is yeah. It, you know, is there. Be difficult. Yeah. It can be very difficult. Right. Sure. So it's, it's easier. Tell me about your husband mm -hmm. because he helps coach you. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, he's my coach. and he's, and he's, and he's, and he helps you out. That must make it easier because you know that you have a support system in your yeah. house when it, when it comes to this, tell us yeah. about, tell us about Zach. Um, well, he was a college football coach for 26 years, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the time, especially earlier on in his career, he um, he was the strength coach. Um, mm -hmm. He he kind of did double duty. Um, in fact, he's the person who got me into lifting weights. Mm -hmm. um, I had never lifted weights before, um, and he taught me how to do it and you know taught me how, what exercises was what you know mm -hmm. what's the best way to train you know and uh and so I kind of tell him like you you kind of you created this monster now you have to kind of deal with it now <laughs> you have to deal with it now I want to go to a couple of shows a year so that's just yeah, the way it is at that fault. point right 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 well but, you know he is your husband so you have to blame yeah. him yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but now he um but it's been really really great you know he um you know, a lot of people, they don't, they either don't get the support at home. Like there's some people are like, you know, I, I hear so many stories from a lot of my clients where they don't have that support system from their significant other, or, um, you know, uh, a lot of competitors, you'll see a lot of them go through divorces. A lot of them, um, they either are single or they date other competitors, mm -hmm. you know, because they know what that lifestyle is like. Um, it's very, very difficult, you know, but if we, we make it work, you know, he trains me, uh, he kind of slows me down. He kind of keeps me um, you know, grounded as far as like, okay, Sarah, chill out. Like mm -hmm. you're doing fine. Like mm -hmm. don't do this. Don't do that. He, he really helps like direct me because I can help other people. I can train other people, but mm -hmm. when it comes to myself, I kind of go spastic a little bit. And I'm just kind of like, what about this, this, and this, and this. And he's like, stop, take this out. You only need this many exercises. Stop doing too much. So you're a perfectionist when it comes to this. You want to, you want to really, you really want to look good when you're on stage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What was it like the first time on stage? Because somebody's going to judge your physique. Somebody's going to look at you. You're yeah. going to have a male, a female, whoever that is. And they're going to say, I don't like her calves, right? <laughs> or I don't like her shoulders, you know, or yeah. I like her abs, or maybe I don't like her abs. Right. How was yeah, that like? What was that like? What was going through your mind? You know, it really wasn't so much like, um, it wasn't so much like I didn't like, uh, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think. I remember, like, mentally, 
being like, oh my gosh, I'm on stage. I'm finally doing this. Mm -hmm. I remember being in my back pose because uh, I started out in figure. I remember being in my back pose and looking down and because I felt my legs were like jelly. I looked down, I remember my knees like popping against each other. They were shaking so hard. Right. Um, and so it's not that I don't, I mean, I don't really take away from, you know, oh, well, th these people don't like me. They don't like my, my body. I must have an ugly body. I don't really look at it like that. Mm -hmm. um, I look at it as in like, okay, that chick won. I didn't win. What does she have that I need to work on? You know, but then again, I also have to reel myself back in and be like, you know what? I like the way I look. If that was third place for this competition, that's fine. In my life, this is how I like to look. And that's kind of something I've had to re reinforce over and over again in my mind with bikini, because it is a very different look. And mm -hmm. I've had to you know, realize, okay, Sarah, what might win on stage might make you very uncomfortable in your everyday mm -hmm. life. So I, I kind of have to remember that too, that this is a hobby. You know, this is not everyday life. Right, right. What was it like going from figure to, you know, to a bikini? What was that like for you? I, okay. You're, you're, you're laughing at that because there's I, definitely yeah, a story. It so funny. Yeah, it was so funny because going into uh, my, my last figure competition, which was last year, I did figure for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, going into it, I was, you know, I had to eat a lot because the body type I am, I'm, I'm kind of like an ecto mesomorph. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a pretty high metabolism. And it was pretty hard to get muscle on me and keep it on. And so we were doing maybe like 10, 15 minutes of low intensity, steady state cardio a day, mm -hmm. um, lifting really heavy all the time, eating a lot. And, you know, I went from that going into the competition. I told my husband, I was like, man, I'm bigger than I ever set out to get. Mm -hmm. And they want me to get bigger. I, I think I'm going to go to bikini because I just don't want to get any bigger. I don't like the way I look anymore. Mm -hmm. And so... He was like, I'm totally in support of that. So I didn't, my competition last year, feedback was, you know, you're lean enough, you're conditioned enough, mm -hmm. you need more mass. And so I said, okay. So we decided to do bikini. And so from September the 1st to January the 1st, I did, let's see, two or three leg workouts a week and then the rest cardio. I mean, I was just cardio all the time. Right. Cause you're looking for a different look at that point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so January 1st hit, uh, I was again doing three leg workouts a, a week and one whole leg, whole lower body, and then two glute focused workouts. Mm -hmm. And then one day I would put a little bit of light back and shoulder, almost like rehab exercise. Like I was doing like the little you know, cables and stuff like this, very light stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then I was like, man, my shoulders are still not really coming down. And so I just, I stopped doing shoulders in like February mm -hmm. and back. So it's three days of cardio, three days of lower body. That's it. And then my calories had to get cut. So I was doing like 25, 2,600 calories a day for figure. Now it's like 17 to 1,800 calories for bikini. And I'm even wondering, should that even go down a little bit? Right. So, you know, protein had to get cut. And then I had to, you know, bring carbs and fats down a little bit. But, you know, I don't need as much protein as I used to have to have. And, right. um, the, you know, the, the posing, the posing is totally different. <laughs> I'm a very, I'm a pretty stiff person. And so figure I was, that was good because you could be stiff, but then in well, bikini, it, it's structured, it's structured. It's more structured, yeah, very, right? Very, right. very structured. And then bikinis a little bit more, you got a little bit more sass, a little bit more freedom. Mm -hmm. And so I had to completely almost like create this new personality on stage, um, you know, because you could go with bikini. It's like, you could be sexy bikini or bubbly bikini or right. sassy bikini and i think more with me is more bubbly i guess <laughs> you like you like you like you like the bubbly bikini now, yeah yeah now let's go back let's go bay what well, let's go way back because mm -hmm. you have a growth mindset you can see that because you're saying what do i need to do i got mm -hmm. beat by somebody what do mm -hmm. i need to do to make to make myself better clearly in order to do this in as as you know in any sport mm -hmm. you have to have discipline where did that come from in your life well, um, I've, I've been playing sports since I was, gosh, 11, 12 years old. I mean, I grew up playing softball, basketball, mm -hmm. volleyball, cheerleading, gymnastics. I, I did all of it and mm -hmm. all into college. And so I've always been pretty competitive. And I always knew, like, if 
I want the, you know, if I want the awards, if I want the reward, if I want the championship, you know, I've, there's work that's got to come in. Even if you're naturally talented, you still have to develop that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it did take a while for me that the diet was the hardest part for me because I could work out all day long. I love it. I think it's very right. fun, but right. the discipline when I had to come to the diet, that's where I really had to like focus after I went through that first competition where I realized, Hey, there's, there's certain foods you just, you cannot eat, you know, right. um, you gotta, you gotta eat, eat to train, eat to fuel your body. And so I remember my husband and I, we would go, uh, his mom has a beach house and we would go, uh, to go, you know, vacation down there a lot. And there was this little bitty gym, uh, in Shalote, North Carolina. I mean, it's tiny. It's like in a plaza, uh, mm -hmm. down there. And there, there was owned by this man and this woman who used to do couples bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And she was like a silver sneakers instructor. So they worked out, they did it all back in like the eighties and early nineties. <laughs> and so she was, we were talking, she's like, Oh, you compete. That's so cool. And she was just talking to me and we were talking about the diet and she said something I will never forget. She was like, yeah, you need to make sure your diet is right. She said, because if you eat that cookie that you're not supposed to eat, she's like, when you get on stage, that cookie is going to show up somewhere on stage. You don't know where it's going to show up, but it's going to yeah, show up and they're going to find, up. and they're going to find my, my, um, my partner in one of my offices is a uh, NPC judge. And he, mm -hmm. he, he says, I always know when somebody is cheating and they don't look their best when they're, when yep. they're up there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, and so I, I look at it this way. Okay, if my show is, um, I don't know, if my show is June the 12th, mm -hmm. okay, whether Sarah stays on her diet or mm -hmm. doesn't, they're not going to move that show because I ate a burger. It's nope. going to stay there. So I'm either going to show up ready or I'm not going to show up ready. And I don't want to spend the money and the time and the effort getting ready for a competition and then do something stupid to mess it up and not go in there looking right. my best sure. embarrass myself. Yeah. So. When it comes to nutrition, what's those last couple of months like? What do you know? What goes through your mind? Because really, what happens with me is I mm -hmm. email and text. I don't, I don't, I don't get on the phone with clients anymore because yeah. it could be, it could be really, really tough at that point. Yeah, um, honestly, with me, I, the way that I found is that I don't mind eating the same things over and over again. And I found over right. the years, I found certain foods that I love and certain foods. I don't mind eating over and over again. And that's really where, and that's what I do with my clients. I'm like, tell me, what are your, your favorite healthy foods? You right. know, because if you're eating the foods you enjoy that are going to help you get to your goal, then it's not going to be that hard to stick to a plan. If mm -hmm. you dread every single meal you eat, then you're, it's going to be easy for you to fall off the wagon. Right. You know, and you so have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy it somewhere along the yeah, way. So right. I, I love every single meal I eat. I love, I just not want twice as much as I get, but I, I love it. And so with me, it's getting, um, it's just getting, in, you know, kind of having to say, okay, that's all you get there. Don't, don't eat it too fast because that's all right. you're going to get. So it, it is, it can be difficult. Um, there is definitely some times where I get a little bit hangry um, and, sure. and irritable. Um, on, actually, before I got on here, I'm, where I'm at this conference, uh, the hotel, I don't know why this hotel is like this, but they have no microwaves. They have a refrigerator, but no microwave here. And they don't even have a hotel. stove. So if you brought if you brought a meal prep, that's it. You're done. You got to go downstairs yeah. and you're eating yeah. French fries and chicken fingers because that's probably the healthiest thing yeah. there. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to have to eat cold chicken and potatoes tonight, you know, for dinner. That's just the way that it's going to be. There's actually, I think I found a, there's a gas station, I think a quarter mile away. So I'm going to go down there and heat up my food if I want to eat it hot. But you know, that's just some of the sacrifices that you have to make mm -hmm. in order to reach your goals. And so yeah, I remember walking up here, I was so mad. I was like, they don't have, they don't have a microwave here. I have no mm -hmm. place to heat up my food. I was so mad. <laughs> and so you get mad. So you get even hangrier at that point. Yeah. So yeah. who, who were the top three influences in your life? You mentioned Monica Brandt because that, I mean, she's influenced a lot, right? Yeah. It, 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 would she be one of them? And if she is, who are the other two? Uh, yeah. I mean, she always is the, 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 I guess the catalyst, the one that kind of started this whole thing uh, for me as far as like wanting to, 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 to realizing that, Hey, there's something out there. Um, you know, obviously, um, uh, obviously my husband, he, he's, he's great because he encourages me. He pushes me and he also holds me accountable. It's like when we, it's really funny when we go into the gym, 
he's like, okay, I'm not your husband right now. I'm your coach. So if like we go in there and like, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, like he'll call me out on it. And he'll be like, I'm just saying this is coach. I'm just saying this is coach. So, so, so so you're, so you can't get mad at him. Yeah. You can't get upset. And I think that's going to be the first question I ask him when he comes on the podcast (laughs) is what do you do and how do you motivate Sarah and what goes from there and what goes through his mind? So, all right. So I'm writing this down so that that's the first question that I ask. Yeah. That how definitely, he definitely influences me because he, he does does push me. Uh, Number three, it would be Nicole Wilkins. Um, She was a four time uh, figure Olympia champion. Mm -hmm. And before I did my very first competition, she had just won her first Olympia and mm-hmm. she, I was living in Michigan at the time. She's from Michigan. Mm-hmm. She, and you know, my husband, at the time, the job that he had and I had, they, we didn't make a ton of money. And so I can really afford a coach mm-hmm. at that time. And so I was just learning from everybody that was around me at the gym and stuff. And, um, and so I remember she had just won the Olympia. I found out she lived in Michigan about, oh, about hour and 15 minutes away from me. And she had a little gym up there. And on her website, it was like, you know, um, if you join our gym, you can get a free training session with me. And I'll put, you know, then, you know, like you can buy more sessions after that. Well, I reached out to her and I was like, listen, I live really far. I kind of live too far away to actually get a membership. But if you'll give me that free session, I'll take you to dinner. And she was like, okay. So <laughs> I'm like, what? So, I mean, I had to find a, a sitter for my, for my daughter. And I, I remember I went there to her little gym. I, she put me through a training session and then we went to Outback Steakhouse. And she was- What did she eat? What, what did she eat that night? I remember this. So we went and we sat down and she was actually getting ready for the Arnold because she just won the Olympia. She had turned in her, um, her contract for the Arnold. And I think it might have been like December, maybe. Um, Because I remember it was freezing because the the lock on my car was frozen whenever I got out of the the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But she, I I remember we were there. I'm like, I'm going to watch what she eats. So, of course, they bring you the bread. Slide the bread aside. We're not eating bread tonight. She got salmon and uh, and steamed vegetables. And I'm like, well, I'm not really a big fish person. I'll have the grilled chicken breast. (laughs) That's kind of what we did. And I remember I looked like a a reporter because I had like a little notebook with questions in it. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I need have some questions for you. And I was like, what what shade of uh, foundation do you use? Do you shave or do you wax? I mean, I was asking her. Right. You were asking everything. So you had your like your little notebook or your mental notebook and you were going for it. Like, like, like here I have four time Olympian champion. And it's, it's, it's difficult to win one, mm-hmm. let alone four. Yeah. You know, and I remember she was just the sweetest person. I mean, I still have her cell phone number. When I turned pro, I text her and I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but I wanted to let you know, I finally got my pro card. And she wrote back and she's like, Sarah, I absolutely remember you. I'm so excited for you. Congratulations and good luck in your, you know, in your pro career. And right. I was like, she, I mean, she's just a sweet, sweet person. She's, she's very, very nice. She was very generous. She came onto the show, believe it or not. Yep. yep. Nicole was on the show. Um, we're 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 going to have Monica come on. She's good friends with Jenny Lynn. Jenny Lynn won two Olympias, mm-hmm. right? And so she's a, she's another one, and she's a business partner. And yeah. um, so we're going to get you know maybe we'll have all of you on at one point in time. Okay. No, listen. You're going to have Monica Brandt, Jenny Lynn, Nicole Wilkins, and Sarah Willis. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna make this happen. We Hold on, not like the other. <laughs> Hold on, I have, I have the cell phone numbers. So keep talking. If you look me, if you see me looking down, uh-huh. I'm starting the process right now, just to let you know. That's so <laughs> I'll just be sitting back and I'll be like, just watching. Like, oh wait, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to say something now. But I'm sitting here watching all three. Of oh no, other. no, we're, I'm gonna ask you the, I'm gonna ask you the first question, Sarah. Oh, so God. that's all. That's all good. <laughs> So when you got to college, you went mm-hmm. to college on a scholarship. And for, yep. for, for what sport did you get? For, for softball and for cross country. So you got two scholarships. You, you graduated college in three years. Yep. Uh, so with cross country, it was more like they needed people to run. And I'm like, hey, I can stay in state. And they're like, hey, we have some extra scholarship money. So it wasn't like, oh, we're recruiting. You're like, hey, we have some scholarship money. Can you? Yeah, I'm like, hey, I'm in. Like, so it kept me in shape. I got some mm-hmm. money to pay for college and then softball season rolled around in the spring and I was in shape and ready to go. 
What, be, what, what was your time in, in, in the 5K in, in cross country? Um, it was in the low 20s. I wasn't very good. I'm more of a sprinter. I'm definitely a, 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 a short distance. I'm a sprinter. I had, I had my son run a, a 5K the other day around around our complex here because, yeah. um, you know, he, as you know, he's a hockey player. So I'm trying to, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to get him in shape for the, um, yeah. cause he, he has a tendency to be a big boy. He, he should actually yeah. be an outside linebacker. So maybe we'll talk to Zach about that. Maybe we can get him in Penn state or something oh, like that, that or Ohio state. Right. Yeah. But, um, but he, but he loves hockey and, um, he actually did pretty good. He did it in, in 18 minutes. So I was, uh, That's really, my yeah. stepson runs cross country up, uh, you're actually, he runs up in, uh, at Vassar in New York. So it's yep. close to you. And he, um, he runs and I'm just, he's, I mean, he's built for it though. He's tall lean. And I'm just like, Hey, I just ran to stay in shape. I would keep like, we had some, uh, some Kenyans on our team and those guys, they just glide. And I remember the guys, they they ran, you know, they ran the 8K, girls ran the 5K, and I remember the a really good kid, our number one runner for the guys, I would always say, I'm, my time's going to be, I would I would compete my 5K time against his 8K time, and he would still beat me. Like, he was just so good. <laughs> All right, we do have a response from Jenny Lynn, oh just gosh. to let you know. <laughs> we have a response, and it's a thumbs up. So, yeah. So, I don't know, it may take a little bit. I'm doing, but you know, I'm running this up the flagpole. Okay. So how, how do you fit everything in marriage, three kids, full-time okay. job, personal trainer, okay. competitor, you have to be really organized <laughs> to get all of this in. It right? is, I, I think I just heard Zach in the background. Go, mm. uh -huh. <laughs> I heard him too, by the way. <laughs> so, well, it, it is it is really difficult because um, I, a lot of times that's another time when Zach has to step in and be like, okay, you're burning the candle at both ends. So like, actually recently he's like, okay, 9 p.m. You got to stop. I don't care if it, if you're doing a, a plan for somebody, if you're folding clothes, whatever. He's like, you, you've got to stop. Like you need to stop and just chill out and, and rest. So um, I would just get up in the morning. I cook breakfast. I go to work get home. I try to change really quickly, go to the gym, get back home and then do dinner and, and, um, you know, home, home stuff and everything like that. And it, it gets hard. Um, you know, I have to ask for help now because you still be like, Oh, I want to do it all myself. I want to be, you know, June Cleaver meets, you know, Wonder Woman, you know, I want to do all of it. So, yeah. You, you, you want it, you, you want it all. There's nothing. Yeah. That... Yeah. I want to be able to do it all. So, um, you know, Zach has says, you know, he's telling me like, listen, Sarah, like ask for help, like, let us know what you need, you know? And, and so he, you know, he'll have the kids, okay, the kids unloaded the dishes. What else do you need? You know, and they're out of school right now, so they can help. So, so everybody's contributing in the family, yeah. which, which is the way it should be anyway. Yeah, yeah right? they, they should do that, you know, and there's some things they, that they do leave for me to do because I like some things done certain ways. Like I load the dishwasher because I know how to load it the right way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Everybody else does it the wrong they way. Wrong uh, Zach, way. Zach, I know you're there. I mean, do you load the dishwasher and you do it the wrong way? Do you get yelled at? I get yelled at if I, if I load it the wrong way. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that on our podcast. So. <laughs> So <laughs> now, now tell me your personal trainer, you have online businesses, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. What motivated you to help that? Cause it, you know, I, I know that you like to help people out. What was that yeah. motivation? You're like, okay, you know what? I have all this knowledge. Mm -hmm. Zach has given me a lot of knowledge. I have my own knowledge mm -hmm. and, and I yeah. want to, you know, I want to help people out, but what jazzes you to help people out? Well, okay. So when I started training, it was all in person uh, at the Michigan Athletic Club in East Lansing. And I loved training people, but then because I coached, he got a job, you know, in another state. So we moved. I had to leave all my clients. And I hated that because I had grown to, you know, like really care for him. And so, um, you know, when I first started out um, after my first competition, Going into my, my you know, um, actually my second competition, I, I self, self trained again. For my third one, I did have a guy do my nutrition, Mike Davies in uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. He did my nutrition for me. And uh, then after that, he did do some of my training for a little while. And uh, uh, great, he's a great guy. It, and I noticed, I'm like, hey, he does online training. I wonder, I'm, 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 I see more and more people doing this. I'm a certified trainer. Why am I not doing this? And, you know, with Zach's job, it doesn't matter where we go. I can take my clients with me. 
Right. And so that's, that's the beauty of this. That's the beauty yeah. of online, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of what I, I did was I'm like, hey, like, let's let's do this. Like, I don't have to let, give them to somebody else. Like, I can take them with me. And so that's what we did. And then, you know, when we moved from, we moved all over the place. We came, my home state's Kentucky. It's where we live now. And um, I remember we moved to this really little small town and they didn't have, they had a little gym mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there were like very few women training at that gym at the time so I get there they see this the, the college the college coach's wife training doing these competitions mm -hmm. don't look doesn't look like the normal person and then they're like hey well, they started reaching out to me I had some of the college girls reach out to me so I started training some of them in person because I work, wasn't working full-time at that point and then just got busier and busier and I loved watching these women change their bodies and being mm -hmm. part of that and I actually one of the guys um he told, he was friends with my husband and he goes, his wife was one of my clients. He goes, man, he's like, my wife is like a different person now. He goes, she's so happy. He's like, I feel like I've got my wife back. And it just made me feel so good to know I had some type of impact on someone's health and someone's life. You know, it just made me feel really good. And it's true when I say, like, I say it's real. I say this all the time. I know it sounds so corny, but I love to put the personal in personal training. Like I love to get to know my clients. I don't want it to just be, oh, you send me money, I send you plan, I'll see you, you know, the next time you pay me. It's not like that. I love to stay in contact with them and it just makes things so much easier. I feel like they get a better result the more communication there is between us. You know what? When, when you're dealing with a client, a patient, whatever, you know, what I say to them, and it's very important what you just said, and for our listeners, mm -hmm. I, I want you, to, I really want you to, you know, to listen into this because, you know, when you're working out and you're eating right and your body is changing, it's a mental, mm -hmm. physical, emotional, spiritual type of a situation, right? Mm -hmm. You gain yeah. your self-confidence back. You gain your self-esteem back. You feel mm -hmm. better about yourself. You make better decisions in life, family decisions, business decisions, right? And to, 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 to motivate, to educate, to inspire people to that level is um it's, it's it's really very gratifying and very satisfying right mm -hmm. yeah. especially during this time of the pandemic right yeah you know because i don't know i i know that you know my patients you know it's not the quarantine 15 it was the quarantine 30. yeah you know and did you have that experience with some of your clients where they were struggling going back and forth yeah it was really hard for a lot of them because <laughs> Um, you know, when the pandemic, when it first hit, you know, we kind of heard that, hey, some of these gyms might be closing. Mm -hmm. So I had a few things at home. I don't have a home gym. Um, and I was, I, so my, so Zach and I, we left the gym one day and like, let's run by Walmart and grab a few things just in case. I mean, I had like a little, like a six pound medicine ball, a kettlebell, maybe some 10 pound dumbbells and a stability ball. Like mm -hmm. I didn't have that, but I have some resistance bands. So I went to Walmart, we got another kettlebell. Mm -hmm. We got a, a, a resistance band, a resistance band set where you could like hook it into the wall and, right. pull and you know, all that stuff. So we did get some more, more items. And then we found like we were going to order some more stuff online. Everything was sold out. I mean, yeah. and some things were being sold at ridiculous prices. Like you know, or everybody was price gouging, you know. Oh my gosh, I would say like 20 pound dumbbells going for like $200. I'm like, what? You know, it's right. Crazy. And normally, normally you can get them for $19.99 or something like that. Yeah, right? it, was, it was, it was crazy. So I did have people that were like, oh, Sarah, you know, I, what do I do? Are there things I can do from home? You know, we were trying to get creative with stuff. I have some posts on my Instagram, on Instagram from when I would do some like at home workouts with like minimal, uh, minimal equipment. I was doing split squats. I had to open my car door in my garage, put one foot back into the, the, the seat of the car and do split right. squats like that. Right. I mean, it was really interesting. But you know what? You're able to, again, help motivate, educate and inspire because you can sit there and you can say, you don't need to have a big gym. You can use body resistance. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a yeah. guy like me, who's 59 pushing 60, oh, geez, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not benching heavy weights anymore. I mean, I got calcification on every joint in my brain, I think, you know, from <laughs> from from all the working out and so forth and so on. So so, you know, it, it's a situation where you can still work out. And when I work out, I work out with light weights. You know, I'll do a kettlebell workout. It's 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 with a light. It's with a lighter weight. If I'm doing shoulders or chest, I'll go for higher reps. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to yeah. go for higher reps and I'm going to go for, you know, less weight. Oh, you know who I forgot to text for our little talk to? 
Yeah. Oh, hold on. One more. Hold on. Gina Aliotti. So we're going to, oh, we're going to yeah. see, we're going to, we're going to try to get her in there. Hold on. Oh, that's great. All right. So let's see, let's see what they all say now. This, well, this will be good. fun. I'm down whenever they are. That's great. So, so tell me about your last show. How'd you do? Okay. So I just did my first bikini show. Um, it was, I almost got as nervous doing it as I've been almost at any show, just because, you know, I've, I was like, I've never done this before. I'm going against all these girls that have always done bikini mm -hmm. and they're pros. You know, they turn pro in bikini. They did. Mm -hmm. I was in line uh, getting ready to go on stage. And so you sit there and you're talking to the girls and one of the girls turns around and she's like, well, you know, she starts talking about something and she asked me a question. I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, I'm really nervous, yeah, because this is like my first bikini show. And she's like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, I've never, I've never done bikini before. She goes, how are you competing here? How are you a pro? And I was like, I turn pro and figure. And she was like, oh, okay. You know, and she's like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, well, you're looking the part, you know? So I was, I was extremely nervous, but um, I did the Optimum Classic in Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And um, I got uh 10th in open bikini. Outstanding. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was like, hey, I'm, I just didn't want to get 16. I was like, hey, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I was like, hey, I got top 10 in my first bikini show. That's great. I've already done better in bikini than I did in pro figure. And so um, then we did my, I did masters as well. And I actually won uh, the masters. Wow, that is fabulous. Yeah, yeah. What's next on the horizon? What's the next goal? What's um, the next show? Well, in eight days, I'm doing, I think it's called Clash of the Titans. Yes. Um, in yeah, in Austell, Georgia, um, they have the Clash Championship, which is a different one. They had that one, I think, back in April. That's a really big one. Um, and but this one, I think this might be the first time they've ever had this one, but it's the Clash of the Titans in Austell, Georgia. Um, and then also we're going to take July off and mm -hmm. do um, the Texas Pro, I think is what it's called, mm -hmm. it's, um, in August. And then the week, the weekend after that, the Nashville Fit Show. Oh, outstanding. So... Yeah. So this is a whole lifestyle for you. Tell me about yeah. your family, about your children. You have your, have your children work out? Are they doing things? Yeah. Are you and Zach getting them up and going? You know, baseball, football, soccer, basketball, whatever that is, right? Yeah, um, we actually, well, we've got uh, three. We've got my, my stepson's 21. I told you he runs cross country mm -hmm. and track and basser. Um, then my daughter, Reagan, she's 12. She's getting ready to be 13. Um, she- So they know everything, don't they, at that age? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just wanted to throw that in because my son and I were were, were going at it earlier today. Yeah, but that's we've okay. Had to have that, we've had yeah. to have, have I had that. to throw that in there. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. Like one on one, she's great. You know, sometimes when she, her little brother gets on her nerves or you know something, she just has like these little. I'm like, watch the tone. Like mm -hmm. one of my one of my former coworkers, he go pump the brakes, back it up. Let's do that one again. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Um, but she, she actually, she, Reagan is extremely athletic. Mm -hmm. Um, she's very fast. She, she's tried different things. She's, she's one of those kids that if she's not good at it the first time she does it, it's like, I'm done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. but we have a rule. If you start mm -hmm. something, you finish the season, you know, uh, so right. she's, she did volleyball. I think that she's going to end up doing volleyball again. She may, she tried softball, which was my support. Um, she was great at running, you know, running bases, but mm -hmm. the, and, and her bat speed was good, but she just could not connect with the ball, but it was her first year playing. So we're going to work on that. She might, I told her, I'm like, if you just keep trying, let's try it again. We're going to take you to the batting case. She might do that right. when um, she does not want to do basketball and living in Kentucky. That's, 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 you know, unheard of, you know, everybody loves basketball. <laughs> everybody. But, uh, cause, yeah. cause at UK, you know, every, everybody's a, uh, you know, exactly. a basketball fan. Absolutely. Yeah. But she loves track, like track. She loves running. She actually really liked going. She's been to the gym with me some and, and worked out with me. There's I actually have a YouTube video of me and her working out together. Um, and she really liked that. Um, so we're thinking volleyball, softball, you know, track. And then um, my, my baby, um, his name's Baxley. He's eight. He is probably going to be our football player, um, and he he really likes that. You know, he's the one. He he's built more for that. I think mm -hmm. um, he seems to have more of an interest in football. He tried t-ball. He was kind of like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Like this. If but you like, ball, if you like football or hockey, because my son when, yeah. when when he played baseball, you know, he's thirteen. So the last time he played was like five years ago, Sarah. 
Yeah. He, he tried it like a year and a, a year or so ago, just before the pandemic. I think the season before yeah. the pandemic, he's like, because I mean, yeah. they're used to the fact, but he did, but he did make the baseball team at school. This oh, year. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. We think that he's probably going to be doing, doing some football. He seemed, he seemed to really like that. Um, he has more of an interest in it. And so we're, we're going to see, he played a uh, flag football this year. He liked it. Okay. But he was like, I want to hit people. Like, I don't want to just run after people and pull a, a flag out of their, off their belt, you know? So he's, he's wanting to do foot, like actual football. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Zach's got into his head at that point and, and he's, yes. and, he, and he wants, and he wants to play. <laughs> he wants to play. Listen, yeah. he's a boy, you know, boys and girls too. I mean, they're playing mm-hmm. football. James has on yeah. his hockey team. He has a defenseman who's, 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 who's a, a 13 year old female. So, and she's as good as anybody else. And they're going to start checking this year. And he can't wait till he get at, gets out there. Yeah, I actually went out for football when I was in high school. I remember I went out for, I was like, I want to play this. And my parents were like, okay, Sarah, like, we love you. We're not going to tell you you can't play, but you're really good at softball. If you get hurt, you might not be able to get a scholarship to college. So I was like, hey. okay. So, you know, I, so I, you've been athletic all of your life. You, you're just, yeah, you're just like, yeah. I just want to go and I want to play. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, you can play with the Barbie dolls, but then you know what? If there's a game of, of, of tackle football out on the front yard, you're out there and you're like, let's go, guys. You know, that's yeah, it. like I loved it. I, I loved, I, I wanted to do, to do. I loved, you know, any sport I tried to do. I, I enjoyed it. But yeah, I definitely think uh, Bice is probably going to do. He's, I would say he's probably going to be a linebacker. If I had my guess. It'll be linebacker, but yeah, Zach. You know, he'll go to Zach. Zach doesn't fish it, but Zach's like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. So let me show you the right form of stuff. So he he does. He he totally right. got interest in it. Yeah. So he's and he actually already will say like, can he'll ask, can I go to the gym with you? And I'm like, honey, you're eight. You're not allowed to work out yet. Or he'll say, hey, mom, I'm back here. You know, what would you like for breakfast? He'll be like, I want something healthy. You know, so he'll say like. You know, I, you know, is this healthy? If I give him somebody like, can I eat this? Is this healthy? I'm like, yeah, you're good. You know, so we try to, you know, I don't, I don't make my family eat exactly what I'm eating when I'm, mm-hmm. you know, getting ready for a competition. You know, this is my, my, you know, decision right. to do these contests, not theirs. But it is really interesting to see like me eating something, and my my kids might be like, hey, can I try a bite of that? And me give them mm-hmm. a bite, like, ooh, I like that. So I'm right, like, okay, sure. Well, you know, well, you want fish and rice? Okay, I'll make you some fish and rice. You know. So when we were talking, you want to, you want to talk about social media approach. I find mm-hmm. this interesting. I find this an interesting topic. What's your yeah. social media approach? What, what are those lines that you talk uh, about that you don't cross? <laughs> I find it. I find this fascinating. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit more conservative when it comes mm-hmm. to what I do and do not post on social media. Um, my rule is that if I don't want my kids to see it or I don't want my pastor to see it, I'm not going to post it. You don't want anybody uh, else to see it at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I don't want to post something that, it, you know, is going to cause embarrassment to my family mm-hmm. or to damage my my my, faith, my my witness as a Christian. You know, mm-hmm. I feel that my faith is extremely important to me. And I feel like if I'm, if I'm posting profanity or if I'm posting, you know, like, I don't know, you know, naked pictures or whatever, some of these things. There seems to be a lot of, you know, profanity around the gym and stuff like yeah. that. And it, it's kind of that culture right there you know there's yeah. definitely a culture of that right yeah yeah I, I mean some of the stuff you hear backstage I mean it'd make a sailor blush so it's just kind of you know I just I choose not to do that and you know that's just my personal preference you know on my social media um you know I, I try to do that and then I don't want to post I mean there, I think and my, my steps my steps and actually because I'm I want, I'm going to be doing uh, some photo shoots, you know, this summer and my husband and I were trying to pick out, you know, bikinis to, to mm-hmm. take pictures in and stuff. And he, my husband said, like, well, what about this one? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like that might be too risque. And, you know, so he started, and I, you know, we, so we start talking to my stepson about it and my stepson was like, well, you know, Sarah, there's a, a line. He goes, there's a, you know, you can wear whatever. He goes, he goes, honestly, he's like, you could do nude. And if it's, classy you know it's, it could be considered a work of art right. or you can take a selfie of you you know your you know for, for a booty shot and that right. completely inappropriate it just could be completely inappropriate yeah, at that point yeah, right yeah so he's like it just depends on your motive the type of right. picture it is and how you post it and so i was like i was really glad that he it almost kind of gave me some freedom there mm-hmm. but you know even when i was going to switch to bikini i pulled up bikini 
contest pictures of girls and I was like showing it to my eight-year-old and 12-year-old and I was like hey listen mom's gonna do this these competitions next here are the poses like what do you all think and you know my eight-year-old son is extremely like protective of me and mm -hmm. so he's sitting there looking at it. He, he loves like, his mom that's it yeah right? yeah, yeah exactly so he was just kind of like as he was looking at the pictures and I'm like what do you think and he was like those are really pretty bikinis and I'm like so you're like cool like you're okay and he was like you know, I just kind of wanted to feel, get a, get him to get a feel of it, see what they thought. He was like, yeah, like, I think that's great. You know, like he, he didn't care. I'm like, okay, good. Like, we're not gonna have any issue there. You know, I just don't want like my stepson's friends to see pictures of me and be like, hey man, did you see what Zach's stepmom posted? Yeah, right, right, right. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, forgot right, about yeah. it, right? <laughs> I just don't want to embarrass my kids, you know, or something. Like I think that. that's a wonderful approach. I think that's yeah. great. And I think in part that's what's missing in society today. But yeah. you know, that that that, that could just be our, our personal opinions. Now well, listen, that, actually, that got me a job. I, the job I have right now, that's actually one of the answers that I gave in my interview. The guy interviewing me, he, he was gonna be my manager. He said, you know, what is something it was like uh, I think he said like the hard right. Like what was something that you did that you felt was right but was very hard and not very popular? Mm -hmm. And I said, Well, you know, how I have, how I approach social media, you know, I don't have you know, hundreds of thousands of followers because I don't post some of the stuff that some people do post. And I'm not saying everybody that has a ton of followers does that. I'm just saying. Right. There, but that. Some, sometimes that sometimes that's true. Yeah. Sometimes that's yeah. true. Yes, yeah, we absolutely. Can, we can definitely say that. Now, listen, we're almost done. Our hour is almost yeah. up, believe it or not. It goes oh, right. pretty quick, right? Yeah. It goes pretty quick. Now, you do online training. How can yeah. individuals who want to train with you contact you? Okay, so I do have a website. I'm told you I'm not as, as active on it as I would like to be, but I will tell you, I let me pull um, for call my website. Um, <laughs> the, the most popular way to get a hold of me is on Instagram. Um, it's Sarah, S A R A W I L L I S I F B B Pro. So it's Sarah Willis I F B B Pro is my Instagram handle. I also have a Facebook page, which is uh, IFBB Pro Sarah Willis, mm -hmm. um, and then I also, I do have a a, a, um, a website. It's IFBB Pro Sarah Willis dot Weebly dot com. It's W E E B L Y dot com. So IFBB Pro Sarah Willis dot Weebly dot com. Um, but most of the, most of the people that contact me usually contact me through Instagram or mm -hmm. um, Facebook occasionally. Um, that's how I usually, um, you know, talk, you know, communicate mm -hmm. with people who are interested. Uh, if they send me a message and say, hey, you know, I'm interested in learning more about your plans, I'll send them an, an information email. And, you know, they can look at it has, you know, how I do things. It has pricing, it has payment, you know, how they pay me. It has questions that I need them to answer because I don't do cookie cutter approaches. I like to personalize things mm -hmm. as much as possible. So, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I try not to overcomplicate things. Right. So we're going to have all three of those in our show notes mm -hmm. so oh, that individuals can, can, can contact you. And so mm -hmm. for all of my listeners today, Please contact Sarah. We recommend Sarah 100%. <laughs> contact her. Make sure you contact her. Start working out because if you want to build self-confidence, you want to build self-esteem, mental, physical, emotional aspect of it, she is the person to contact. So we recommend her 100%. Sarah, thank you very much for being with us today. Well, thank you. I hope to come back again anytime you need you, me. You are, you are definitely going to come back again. We're going to have your husband, Zach, on. So when we're done here. We're going to talk with Zach and we're going to schedule with Zach and then we're going to have you both on. And somewhere along the line, let me see if I have any other responses from any of the other. <laughs> no, not yet, but I'm sure I will. And so maybe we'll have a roundtable discussion. Let's see if we can make yeah. this. Happen. So I want to thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to have you. We like to motivate. We like to educate. We like to inspire. And you've done all three of those. So for all of our listeners, again, please contact Sarah. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I'm Dr. Dan. You can contact me. I know I have four offices. So you know what you do is just go to Dan Carlicchio, DCMS on Instagram, because I, I have all these phone numbers in my head. I, I get them wrong sometimes. So you can contact me there. You can go to Suburban Wellness Group. You can go to Nutrition of Westfield, Nutrition and Wellness of Woodbridge. You can go to Goldman Family Chiropractic. You can do all of that stuff, and you can find me, and, 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 and you can get me. So I want to thank everybody for listening. Thank you very much, Sarah, for coming on today. And be the best version of yourselves, everybody. Take care until the next time.